Hey guys, Chris here. I want to talk today about six mistakes that PhDs make when they network. One of the biggest mistakes PhDs make is that they only network with other academics. I think this is challenging because academics just have a really different view of the world. Many of them have never gone through working outside of the academy. It's absolutely necessary to go beyond academia and to find people who are working in all sorts of amazing fields. And I know it's kind of challenging to find those people sometimes and it's easier to reach out to academics. Um, there's a bit of a comfort level thing. Academics kind of speak our language. Uh, sometimes, but the bottom line is I, I just, I don't think there's any way around it. You have to network with people who aren't in academia. Number two, one of the six mistakes that PhDs make when they network is that they put it off until it's too late. I totally did this. Um, my department was kind enough to put together some really good seminars on working outside of academia. They were starting to think about how to prepare students a little bit. And one of the first ones I went to was by a guy who who stress networking so much. And I kind of nodded and I said, yeah, okay, I know I need to network. And I said, I'm gonna start this weekend. And three years went by. I never did, I never networked out of academia. And because of that, when I finally got around to doing it, it was late in the game. I was just finishing my PhD. Uh, honestly, it worked out okay. I mean, I ended up getting a job, but sometimes I think about how much further my career could have been ahead. And I think even in terms of building opportunities and when you network, I kind of talk about it in a different post, you're going to find that you get little job offers and contract offers and it's a really good way to dip your foot in non-academic work. Third mistake that PhDs make when they're networking, this is really a mistake everybody makes when they're networking, is that they get hurt when people don't respond. One of the things I'm a big advocate for is reaching out to people who are outside of academia on LinkedIn, um, kind of like a cold reach out. And sometimes those messages go unanswered. It can really hurt. The first few times it happened to me, I went through kind of an identity crisis and I sat crushed. But the thing is, I mean, once you get a few people who do respond and who are interested in talking to you, it just makes all the difference. So don't take it personally, just keep reaching out to people. If they don't reach back to you or talk, or if they don't want to meet you or whatever, try to just try to just put it on your mind and keep going. Number four of the six mistakes people make when they network, they see networking as transactional. And I know that we have ideas about what networking is, and usually we think of it like this, that you kind of, it's a, I'll give you something, you give me something, and that feels really gross. And I get that because that feels gross to me too, even though I become relatively good at networking. That's really not what I'm trying to talk about when I talk about networking, and I hope that's not really the attitude you go into networking with. I think a way better attitude is just that you're trying to connect to another human being. If you can sit down across the table from another human being and just try to find what makes them tick, what makes them human, to me, that's networking. That's what networking should be. And if you're just kind of sitting down trying to trying to get a job out of somebody, I I don't wouldn't really advise doing that. I mean, people do it. But the bottom line, I think you're going to be way more successful if you just appreciate the person for who they are and try to understand what they do, what makes them tick, the way they see the world. And frankly, that's the way you're going to learn a lot more too about how the world actually works outside of academia. You're going to learn way more if you approach it as a fact-finding mission rather than uh, trying to trick somebody into giving you a job. Fifth mistake that PhDs make when they network. I know I just said it's not transactional um, and I, I like to think of networking as not transactional because it's kind of gross. But if you want to think of it as being just a little bit transactional, PhD students feel like they have nothing to offer. And I think this is such a huge mistake. And I think that what I've found when I've networked with people is that A, people are willing to take the time whether or not I can offer them anything. But the other thing is that you never know when you're gonna be able to offer somebody something. Right now you're an unemployed PhD student. You might be the director of research for a company next week and have a very different outlook on what you have to offer people. So I think just keep that in the back of your mind. That there's no reason why you need to feel bad or feel like you have nothing to offer people because a career is a long time and you honestly never know where it's gonna take you. The final mistake that academics make when they network is, again, it's something that everybody does, it's not just academics, but they see networking as something you do once and then you quit. And honestly, I guess, I mean, if you wanna network until you get a job and then quit, like, that's fair, you can do that. But I think networking is gonna work way better for you if you see it as a lifetime practice that, I mean, for me, it's pretty much once, once a week at least that I'm meeting somebody new, having a coffee with them, having a phone conversation, and just finding out what they're all about and learning from them. Honestly, I've learned so much in the past year about the non-academic job market by just taking people out for coffee and asking them questions about what they do. Even if I don't end up working in their field or, or getting hired by them or whatever, it's really just that the world is like a big jigsaw puzzle of things that you can do. And the more you can put pieces together in that puzzle, the more you're going to have career success 
And also, I think the flip side is you can help other people. I mean, once you arrive, once you get a job, take time to help other people, not just academics. Help anybody who reaches out to you. If you can spare it, if you have the time, this doesn't mean you have to give yourself constantly to the point that you're exhausted, but pay it forward. That's the bottom line. And uh, ultimately, that's going to be the biggest gift that you can give to somebody else once you've arrived and found your career direction. So that's it. Six mistakes that PhDs make when networking. Make sure you check out my other videos, hit subscribe, and I'll see you soon.